All right, so for this video, we're going to be talking about the Reckless Marbled Polecats, okay? And obviously, <laughs> uh, we're using a special type of thing with these. We're going to be using the dice for some of these cards here. Now, this isn't the first time a dice has been available. Dale of Merchants won, the first one. Uh, the Lucky Ocelots used a dice as well. And so they have their own dice, just like these polecats have their own dice. So if you're playing with um, both the ocelots and the polecats in the same game, they are going to have their own separate dice they are using. Now, since I have the box here, let me show you the difference. Okay. First of all... Here we have the Lucky Ocelots. So here's the the difference, obviously, in cards. They almost look exactly the same in their expressions, don't they? Okay, but here's the dice. So here's the dice for the Lucky Ocelots. I mean, here's the dice for the Polecats right here. Okay, and here's the dice for the Lucky Ocelots. This is more of a pink color. And this is more of a red. So that's for them, and that's that's for them, okay? So you're going to be... And obviously, there is some difference on this as well. So there's different symbols on these, obviously. So that's good to know. Another thing you'll notice, um, this one has a blank spot. So if you roll that, that's like a zero. But this one does not have a zero on it. It only has one, two, and threes on it. So that's another difference in the dice, obviously. But they both can only go up to three max. So they can only both go up to three max. Still, if you're using both of these cards in the same game, you better make sure you're rolling the correct dice for the correct critter, for sure. Okay, so let's talk about these polecats. And explain how they function in this game. Okay, so the first one here is the Daring Adventurer. This technique, roll the dice and throw away the rolled number of cards from the market. Then fill the market by drawing cards from the market deck. So let's say I roll a 3 on this dice. You're going to throw away 3 cards from the market. Well, here's the market. They're going to get thrown away. If they get thrown away, they will not be used. At least you get to choose which ones are going to be thrown away. But then it's going to allow you to fill the market by drawing cards from the market deck immediately. So that means maybe there are some cards here you don't want to use or don't want to buy. So you want to uh, get rid of them. So that way you can get some more cards out to put into the market and hopefully have a different card to purchase. So this could be... Uh, advantageous at some point in the game maybe so but and it could be that you only get to do it with one card or two cards but maybe you'll be lucky and you'll get a three who knows or maybe you'll be reckless i should say <laughs> maybe you'll be reckless and it will cost you and you'll only get like a one <laughs> and it doesn't really work out for you then who knows okay so let's move on so here we have the Reckless. Uh, this one is the rare artifact for the Reckless Marbled Polecats. It's a, another technique. You'll show a card from your hand. You'll roll the dice and multiply the card's value with the rolled value for this turn. So let's say um, this is the card I reveal. It's a five. I roll a three. There's the three. I'm not going to roll it physically because I'll probably end up rolling it off the table. But let's say I rolled a three. Well, it's three times five. What's three times five? This card is val this card's value is now 15, which means you can buy any card easily in the market. The max would be a nine anyway. So this would make it very easy to buy a, a very expensive card in the market if you got a high number like that, for sure. So that's what that means. So that's really cool, for sure. Um, and obviously... Uh, 
because you're multiplying the card's value, if you're going to be using it for a stall, you better make sure you have the correct value that it's now currently is. So if it's 15, if this was 15, you wouldn't be able to use this to build a stall because that's not an exact number of one to eight. So obviously that wouldn't work, but maybe you needed, you know, a particular number, who knows? Uh, and it was a different number than this, a two or something. So that's basically what that means. So that's kind of an interesting card for sure, the rare artifact, but you could potentially be reckless with this one too, who knows? Okay, so here we have Swank. This is another technique. Throw away a card from your hand. If it was an Animal Folk card, draw one card from the market deck and place it into your hand. So you could use this to throw away a junk card, but if you do that, nothing else happens. But if you do this to throw away an Animal Folk card, which can be just about anything that isn't junk, is an Animal Folk card, then you get to place then you get to draw one card from the top of the market deck and place it into your hands so you're not going to get one of these cards you're going to get cards that sit on top of a deck that would be put into the market later down the road so you don't know what you're going to get so in a sense you could be considered reckless if you played this card for sure okay so here we have the risky business another technique if you guess the top card's value from the market deck, place the card into your hand. Otherwise, throw away the card. Okay, so this is definitely reckless. This is probably the reckless card there is, if you ask me. So the here so um let's do a bunch of cards. Uh let's grab these cards here. And let's mix them up. I don't know what the top card of the market deck is, but let's just say this is the market deck here. I now must guess the number. So, let's guess a three. It's a four. It gets thrown away. Nothing else happens. So that was kind of a waste of a, a, of a technique. You just threw away a card that you can't utilize. If you get it right, you get to put it in your hand for sure. So it's not completely worthless to play, but it is definitely reckless, for sure. That's what basically that is going to do. So, still cool though, nonetheless. All right, moving on. Let's save that one. Actually, let's do this one first. So this is another one of the cards that will use the dice. You'll roll the dice, it's a technique, Search your deck and exchange the rolled number of cards between your hand and deck and shuffle your deck. So basically, let's say you rolled a three. Okay, I like doing threes a lot. I don't know why, I just do. Let's say you roll a three. You're going to search your deck. You're going to take out three cards because that's the rolled number of cards that you rolled with three. And then you're going to basically, between your hand, you're going to put... Uh, three cards basically back into your deck. So you're going to put those cards that you got, put them into your hand, and then you're going to choose three cards to put back into your deck, and then you're going to shuffle your deck. Is that reckless? Not probably. I wouldn't say that's not, I would say that's probably not reckless. Natural Survivor. I wouldn't say that's super reckless. It's definitely a very useful card for sure, and I would have to say it's one of my favorites for this particular deck, the Natural Survivor. Okay, and then this one. The sofa. This one is probably the coolest one there is for this deck, uh, for this particular uh, uh, merchant. So this one is actually a passive ability. Yeah, there have been some passive abilities in the mix of these techniques, but some of these only have techniques. So the sofa here is a passive ability. While this card is in your stall, your hand size is increased by one. So it's a passive ability that you're going to, obviously, when you decide to use this stall, um, when you put this into your stall, you're going to say what it is. You're going to put the sofa into a stack in your stall. You're going to say what it does, which is, it, so basically it's going to increase my hand limit by one. So obviously you're not going to get the hand limit for a while because it won't be until you have built your fifth stack at the earliest. 
So if you if you manage to do this for your fifth stack, which would probably be the best use of this card anyways, if you do this for the fifth stack, you're now your hand size is going to be increased by one for the rest of the game. Instead of a maximum of five cards, you'll have six. That's really cool. And you won't have to worry about uh, the hand limit changing because it will stay that way for the rest of the game unless you uh, somehow get two sofas or something like that which isn't possible because there is only one sofa in the whole deck of cards in the market deck so there's only one of these so if you're the player that gets this that's awesome for sure uh, you're, you're no one else is going to have this ability for sure so that's that's the cards from uh, this particular merchant so is he reckless are these marbled pokats le reckless yes yes I'd have to say most of these cards are definitely reckless for sure uh, which is almost the exact opposite of lucky if you ask me um, but it does does have a lot to do with luck for sure anyways that's it for this video we still have two more critters to go